In this week's episode, we continue our journey south, leaving Padstow after being stuck here waiting for a weather window. We sail down the coast of Cornwall, all the way to Land's End through Longship's Lighthouse and into Newlyn Fishing Port before heading straight back out around the Lizard, the most southerly point in the UK. And after a rough passage, we finally arrive in the Halford River. We are leaving Padstow after being here for over a week, waiting for the wind to be in the right direction and, um, yeah, ideal conditions to pack round Land's End. We were going to go yesterday, but then the wind changed and it was gusting at 40 knots, so wasn't happening. <laughs> So today, finally, we are leaving. Uh, we have extra crew on board, which is really nice. We've got friends join, joined us. Uh, so we've got three extra crew. So that means that I'm just gonna be looking after Oliver. What is it? Um, hopefully Jack can get a bit more involved today because um, they'll be able to take him up to the mast and hoist the sails with them and stuff like that, which would be great. Mizzle is not a word we'd heard before, but down here in Cornwall, mizzle is the word they use to describe the kind of misty drizzle which hangs around. Hello! We have left Padstow. We're just crossing the Doom Bar now, I think. It's a bit, um, I'm a bit disorientated because I'm inside, which is really unusual. Um, which is nice for Ollie. He gets my full attention today. Although, hopefully, at some point I can swap with Andy and I can get out and do some sailing because it looks like we've actually got wind to sail. It's exciting. <laughs> This episode is a little different to normal. It's very raw. We've tried to edit it so you can just enjoy the journey and experience the sailing. We've had a lovely time in Padstow, but we're definitely ready to leave now. We've been here for, I don't know, 10 days. Um, and uh, I'm ready, I'm ready to move on. <laughs> Today we'll be rounding Land's End and once we've rounded Land's End and gone past an area called the Lizard then we can do a lot more shorter hops and um, there's lots of places to pull into um, whereas sort of on this north coast of Cornwall and North Wales and South Wales the jumps between ports are a lot longer. Yeah, it's just quite a little bit. Find the what? Due to talk about Aren't they back in that cupboard? Yeah. The nice thing about it, having extra crew on is that Jack is getting some lessons and being able to get a bit more involved. Um, I think Ollie's feeling a bit sick down here though. It's a bit wet and rainy, that's why I really need to get this cockpit enclosure done so he can sit outside and not feel so poorly. So, it's probably going to be a puky day for me. After 10 days stuck in Padstow waiting for the right weather, we were feeling a little apprehensive about this journey and we're extremely grateful to have crew on board. 
We had to get the timings of this passage right because it involved coming out of Padstow over the infamous Doom Bar, around Travaux's head, which is a headland that can kick up some big seas, and then through the tidal race, taking the inshore passage between Longship's Lighthouse and Land's End, and finally around the Lizard, which I'll tell you about later. We needed to arrive at each of these hazards at specific times, otherwise these areas could become much more dangerous, so it was important that we stuck to our passage plan. As we motored up the Camel Estuary, the visibility improved, but of course, as we came back out into the Bristol Channel, the character of the water changed from the smooth, calm waters of the estuary to a sea with what you could call a more assertive personality. The first hazard to negotiate once out of the estuary and heading southwest is Travaux's Head. Navigating the waters around Travaux's Head is a captivating yet demanding experience for any sailor. The headland juts out dramatically into the sea, its cliffs battered by powerful swells that have carved out a rugged and unpredictable coastline. The currents here are strong, often swirling unpredictably around the head, creating eddies and sudden shifts in direction that can challenge even the most seasoned sailor. As you approach, the sea can be deceptively calm, but the wind often shifts quickly, funnelled by the cliffs requiring constant vigilance and quick adjustments to the sails. The seabed around Travaux's head is rocky, with hidden shoals that demand careful chart reading and precise navigation, especially as you near the coastline. Despite the challenges, the area offers stunning vistas, with deep blue sea meeting the jagged cliffs under a vast open sky, making it a rewarding experience for those who sail these waters, especially for those equipped to handle the area's unique conditions. Once past Travaux's head, we had a long run down the coast towards Land's End. One possible place we could have stopped if we needed to would have been St Ives. St Ives, a picturesque harbour town on Cornwall's north coast, offers a charming stopover for sailors navigating this rugged coastline. The town is known for its vibrant art scene, sandy beaches and narrow, cobbled streets that invite exploration. However, it pays to be aware that the inner harbour is accessible only to bilge keelers, as the harbour dries out at low tide, leaving many vessels resting on the sandy bottom. Fin kill boats, on the other hand, will need to anchor further out in the bay, where the holding ground is decent but the anchorage can be quite rolly, especially in a northerly swell. While the outer anchorage offers stunning views of the town and surrounding coastline, it can be an uncomfortable spot if the sea is up, making a night at anchor less restful. Despite these challenges, St Ives is a rewarding destination, offering a slice of Cornish charm that's well worth the stop. When approaching Land's End and Longship's Lighthouse, you are presented with two primary options for passage. Navigating the gap between the lighthouse and the mainland, or opting to go round the outside of Longship's Reef. The inside passage between the lighthouse and the mainland is a more direct route but requires careful attention and local knowledge. The channel is relatively narrow and the seas can be confused with strong tidal streams and unpredicted currents swirling around the rocks. The depth is generally sufficient for most vessels, but there are shallow patches, particularly at low tide, making it a route best attempted with confidence in your charts and under favourable conditions. Visibility can also be an issue, as mist and fog are common in this area, adding to the challenge. Alternatively, the outside route which takes you around the western side of Longship's Reef is a safer but longer option. While this passage avoids the tight Rocks Dune Channel, it exposes you to the full force of the Atlantic swell, which can make for a rougher ride, especially in strong westerly winds. However, the deeper water and fewer navigational hazards make this route less stressful, especially for those unfamiliar with the area or in challenging weather conditions. Both routes require respect for the sea and careful planning, but either can be safely navigated with the right preparation and vigilance, allowing you to round land's end and continue your journey along this dramatic stretch of coastline. Must 
We're just arriving in Newlyn after a very lumpy passage. The first bit was just horrible and I was very, very, very seasick. I feel uh, very grateful to the guys on board who helped us out. And I took some seasickness tablets this morning, but I should have taken them last night as well. Anyway, that's by the by. We're here, we're in Newlyn, we're all safe and sound. Uh, we're gonna get a glass of wine and I'm sure it'll be lovely. We've been into Newlyn before. Andy stopped here when he bought Miss Rosie, one of our previous boats back from Falmouth a few years ago. Then we also stopped here with Ocean Melody when we sailed her to North Wales from Dartmouth. So going into here felt safe and familiar. It's a busy little fishing port with friendly staff and basic but decent facilities. We were only here briefly for one night as we were keen to press on with the journey and get a bit further along the south coast. We knew some bad weather was due in about 48 hours, so the next day we planned to crack on and get to the safety of the Helford River. I was just for a little like on the yeah, front. Have you little fella, you've got a bit of slack on the front, you say, Yeah. Go on, take it, you've got some slack. And the last time that we were here in Newlyn, we were also rafted to this boat, which is the Harbour Fisheries Patrol boat, uh, but we were right up next to it that time. This time we're third boat out. We've got no children today, so it's good. Uh, I know. <laughs> Can I have a party? <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Thank you. Okay, pull her in. Just kick that out.
We have just left Newlin and we're heading to the Helford River. Um, I don't know how much footage there will have been of yesterday. Um, I spent the whole day downstairs in a vomit washing machine with Oliver. I was fine, but Ollie was quite sick. Uh, we had a lot of swell, uh, quite a bit of wind, uh, but I think most people had a great day. Um, the boat, we, you know, it, it was a really good shakedown yesterday. We figured out what needed fixing and what doesn't need fixing. <laughs> Um, so today I've sent Andy off with the kids um, because it's going to be a similar day again today, I think. Um, so it's just me, party boat, um, and uh, Mike and Chris and Tim. Um, so it should be a fun sail today without a baby on board. Um, and Jack's gone for the ride as well. He's decided to jump ship for the day and have a day out. Now we're to Yeah. Happy with that? Are they? Of all the navigational hazards we faced on this trip, the lizard is probably the most intimidating. The lizard is the most southerly tip of mainland Britain. Huge and confused seas can be kicked up here due to a combination of the manacles, a series of submerged rocks off the eastern coast, which cause overfalls coupled with the fact that this is the point where the waters of the Atlantic Ocean meet the English Channel. This area has claimed many vessels over the years, so negotiating the lizard is not to be taken lightly. Engine off. Seven knots. Wow. Got five on it already, so. Might not be too bad. Then when it settles down, it's got another one on. Yes, please. Tea. Have another coffee, please. Coffee. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. We mentioned these bottle bottle water bottles last week and we've been using them all week and I just want to say they're absolutely fantastic. Um, there is a discount code in the description if you want to get your hands on yours. There you go. Thank you. Half full to compensate for the angle. I am boiling now. The Lizard is a rugged, rocky peninsula on the southernmost tip of mainland Britain, jutting out into the English Channel, known for its dramatic cliffs and treacherous waters. It's a significant landmark for sailors. The area is notorious for its challenging sea conditions, where powerful Atlantic currents collide with the land, creating swirling tides and rough seas. The coastline around the Lizard is dotted with hidden reefs and jagged rocks, making it a place where mariners need to be particularly cautious. Its name is derived from the Cornish word Lessard, meaning high court, but the challenging nature of the waters around it often makes it feel like the more literal meaning of Lizard might be more fitting, with its potentially dangerous twists and turns. Despite its challenges, Round in the Lizard is a rite of passage for many sailors, offering both a test of skill and breathtaking view of one of Cornwall's most iconic landscapes. 
Rounding the lizard is always a bit of a test. The waves had a constant rhythm, but the occasional larger swell kept us on our toes. Despite the conditions, the boat handled it well and we maintained a steady course. Knowing that once we'd cleared the lizard, the sea would calm as we approached the more sheltered waters of the Helford River. This leg was a reminder of the respect the sea demands. We're getting closer to the lizard, the sea's getting a bit more confused. Quite a big swell, um, but it's all, all going good, just a bit wet and visible.
it's become a lot more comfortable since we have changed since we've changed direction as we rounded the lizard um, so we've got the sea behind us now um, we'll have a tan steer just because it's a bit too much for the autopilot um, in the big well not too much but I've got to be kind to her we're yet to name our autopilot um, so if you can think of a name drop it below in the comments just coming into the mouth of the Helford River. Can't see much because it's very drizzly, grey. Coming down. 